This video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you haven't seen our overall first look at this camera, the Sony a7C, then go watch that video because that's where we go through some of the overall specs of this. Then come back here because today we're gonna be doing some real world tests here with Alex in this beautiful studio we rented. I'm so excited about it. Um, and we're gonna find out how much size really matters with this camera because that's the only real draw to it, to be honest. So you're saying size does matter? Yeah. A few great things not mentioned in my first video. The first thing I noticed on this camera was when I wanted to switch between photo and video modes. On the a7 III, the movie recording mode is a whole three clicks away from the manual photography mode, whereas on the new a7C, they are literally right beside each other. There's also a new third memory or custom shooting mode. For me, I like to set one to 4K at 24 frames per second, one to 1080p at 60 frames per second, and one to 1080p at 120 frames per second. This usually covers all my bases for different shot types. Both of these dial upgrades were adopted from the A7S III, which by the way, I am still waiting for Sony. Be patient, bitch. Well, that's rude. This next one might not sound like a big deal, but when you're dealing with a lot of footage, it can be very useful. And that's the new custom naming for video files. Previously, you were only able to custom name your photo files, but that obviously isn't helpful for video. Now I can custom name each new scene that I shoot. So in post, file management is much smoother. Then there's improved autofocus and autofocus transition speed, which is the same as the a7R4. The a7 III does not have transition speed, which is essentially the speed at which the camera rack focuses between two objects. This can give you a more natural and precise looking focus pull without you manually having to do the action yourself. Another great onset feature is that the screen doesn't go black when using a monitor and eye tracking still works at 24p. And that means that for talking headshots like this, we can still have a monitor plugged in and take advantage of the awesome eye autofocus. There's also no record limit, which is a huge bonus over the 30 minute record limit that the a7 III has. This is great when recording long form content or if you're filming by yourself, which is the case for a lot of us YouTubers and filmmakers. Simply put, your a7C will keep recording as long as the camera still has battery life. Speaking of the battery, the new a7C shares the same battery as the a7 III that we all have come to know and love, as it easily lasts several hours before dying. This is a huge win for me for when I'm traveling and on the go, or for when I'm on location for a long shoot. Things you should know. I've interrupted your programming because I needed a break. So here's my no BS, totally honest, heartfelt rant about Squarespace. I built my own website using Squarespace and normally I find design really challenging, but the template I chose from Squarespace made it super simple. I love how it turned out. It's clean and it's a great framework to support my portfolio. But the best part has to be that I literally built it myself. I didn't have to hire anybody else to do that. And when I run my own business, every expense counts, okay? <laughs> and it's so easy for me to go back in and make customizations and make updates regularly. I love the platform. My favorite features are that I can log in, get analytics about my digital products that I sell in my online store, and they make marketing super simple. I actually just discovered their promotional pop-up and announcement bar feature, and it's great. It's so easy to use. I just love that so many of these features are already built in. And when you run your own business, I don't have a lot of extra time in the day. I don't wanna spend a lot of time learning a new platform. So I just love how intuitive it is. Now here's where you come in. One, head over to Squarespace and take advantage of their free trial. And when you're ready to launch, you can use this code right here, or it'll also be linked in the description box below for you to click on to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And number two, if you don't have a website, make one. And I'll have a video linked up here as to why you should. 8-bit 420. No, it's not 10-bit 422, but neither is the a7 III. If color is that important to you, you're not looking into this camera or the a7 III. You're more so looking at the a7S III. So chill. 
This camera wasn't designed for you. Now the scroll wheel isn't raised as much as it is on the a7 III, and I find it makes it a bit slippery to turn, especially if my hands were a bit wet from the rain, for example. Now, the viewfinder is pretty poor resolution and doesn't have a proper eye cover to shelter your eye from the sun. I get that this may not be an overly used part of the camera, but it's just something that stood out to me when shooting with it. The in-body stabilization is not as good as the a7 III, which you can see by doing a side-by-side -side walking test. But if you care that much about a smooth shot, then shouldn't you be using a gimbal? And last but not least, the dynamic range and noise is ultimately still comparable. You can see more about this in Gerald Undone's review. I'll have it linked in the cards and in the description below. What you've been waiting for, the size. Ooh. All things considered, this is really just an A7 III in an A6600 body, which we've heard time and time again. Ultimately, the choice of which to get comes down to the size and the ergonomics of the camera. $200 really isn't a big price difference because all you're getting is a slightly smaller camera and different configurations. So although it has more or less the same internal capabilities, many people have a problem with the fact that it's only $200 less than the a7 III. And because of this, I would recommend that most people get the a7 III in most situations as opposed to the a7C. Now I own an a7 III and I've pre-ordered an a7S III, but I'm buying the a7C to replace my a6400, and here's why. I travel a lot. It's important for me to have a compact camera, not only one that will fit into my suitcase, but one that I don't hate lugging around with me. Even if I'm going out on just a day for fun and not really planning on shooting anything, it's kind of nice to have a camera that's a little bit lighter than I'm carrying around. The compact nature of the a7C and the flip screen is great for vlogging and for my live streaming setup at my desk. I don't want a lot of things out cluttering my desk or taking up a lot of room. It's a very minimal setup. And it makes a great overhead rig because it's super lightweight and the flip screen makes it really easy to see what I'm doing. It's also virtually identical to the a7 III, so it makes a great second or soon to be third camera for me. So that's all. Do what you want, okay? Like, subscribe, hit the bell, and we're gonna rip Chris Howe's ASMR outro. How's it going? I feel like I can do these way better than Chris does because I have a much more gentle and softer and less creepy whispering voice than he does. His ASMR outros really bother me. They deeply upset me and haunt my dreams and my nightmares. They are the stuff of nightmares. So I hope that you will like this video and subscribe and then help me get rid of Chris's ASMR outros because I hate them. Thank you.